So this session is on tension members in uh, structural steel. And there's several outcomes we'd like to achieve uh, in this session. Uh, first, we'd like to identify uh, typical members in steel uh, and some typical applications that occur in practice. Second, uh, we'd like to recognize and uh, know uh, why we have a slenderness ratio with steel. Uh, the slenderness ratio is, uh, is often KL over R less than 200. It's a preferred ratio. It's not a required ratio. Then we would like to recognize uh, two fundamental failure modes of steel tension members and then take those failure modes and apply them in practice. So essentially there are four outcomes. We'll number them to be specific. The first one is to uh, identify typical tension members and typical applications of tension members. And so uh, I'll challenge you to think, uh, what are some members you know in tension? And where have you seen them? So uh, for me, uh, there's several types of common applications that I've seen. Um, first of all, I think of angles and I think of rods or, or, uh, or threaded uh, members. Sometimes those members have turnbuckles. Uh, sometimes we'll have tubes or pipes. We, we've referred to those as hollow structural sections. Also, wide flanges or WT. Really, any steel member we've talked about could be used as a tension member. So uh, they occur in various forms. If you think about the stairwell hangers, oftentimes those are uh, made out of uh, uh, rods or angles. Uh, the ones in the main stairwell and the gory center are uh, tension members. Uh, these are also often used to hang catwalks or running tracks. Uh, the other application that's pretty common, if you think about wind on buildings uh, and maybe a compression strut, uh, the diagonal member is often in tension. Uh, and that tension is a brace, so it could be a brace. We could also talk about trusses. The second outcome we'd like to get today is to recognize and, and know uh, why uh, we have a slenderness ratio and then to be able to apply it. So the fundamental approach is that uh, we want to select tension members so that KL over R is less than 200. KL is a function of the length. R is really square root of I over A, which is really a geometric property. And uh, it begins to look a lot like L over D less than 50, which we talked about with wood compression members. But this is really a tension member. And so what does this ratio do for us? And so I would challenge you to turn off your computer for a second and think about why we might have this ratio. So I'll offer a few reasons why we might have it. One is constructability. Uh, can you imagine having a 40 foot long half inch diameter rod and how hard that would be to work with in practice. Second is that it limits the initial deflection of uh, steel members. So imagine we have that brace configuration we talked about earlier with wind load applied. If the member was really loose, imagine the deflection that would occur in the members before the brace began to take any tension. The last item is that it prevents uh, vibration of small tension members. We did a church one time that had uh, steel tension members in the walls, and every time the mechanical unit turned on, the tension members vibrated because they didn't meet KL over R less than 200. So now let's look at an example in practice. Uh, let's look at a W16 by 26 tension member 40 feet long. Uh, perhaps this was a, a cord of a, tr of a big truss or uh, some type of bracing element. Uh, and uh, the real question would, it doesn't meet KL over R less than 200. And so KL is the length. We'll take K equal to 1 for now. The length of 40 feet converted into inches gives us KL equals 480 inches. R is a geometric property found in the section 1 of the manual of 1.12 inches. Uh, and if we do this math for KL over R, um, then we find that we have 480 over 1.2 and this is 428, which is much greater than 200. And so it's no good. And so there's several different solutions. We could pick a bigger member. Uh, we could also um, uh, put some initial tension in this member uh, before the load application uh, so that 
uh, the member uh, was effectively in tension before any load was applied and we had effectively uh, negated any need to meet KL over R less than 200. So learning objective three was to recognize two failure modes of steel tension members. So let's imagine that we have an angle and that angle uh, is in tension. This could be a hanger for a catwalk or some other item. Um, but uh, this is the basic condition of the member in tension. So imagine it's a rubber band. And as a rubber band deflects, notice how the section begins to neck down and become smaller as tension is applied to the member. Much the same happens in steel. If you can imagine this angle beginning to neck down as the steel yields in tension, uh, and uh, the yielding occurs on the overall section. We call this the gross section. This is the cross-sectional area of the member. So tension yielding occurs on what we refer to as the gross or the cross-sectional area of the member. The next failure mode uh, is uh, a different type of failure. And to visualize this clearly, think about the extremes. We're going to put a really big hole in this steel member. And then we're going to apply a tension load. So I've tried to do this with a rubber band. You'll notice there's a big hole. And uh, we're going to pull the rubber band. And it's going to behave very differently than the rubber band that did not have the hole. And so watch as we pull. It rips almost immediately before any substantial yielding occurs. And we would sketch this by showing ripping of the steel section uh, off the holes. And again, tension is applied here, and this is called tensile rupture or uh, rupture on the net section. This occurs on this area of the steel uh, that is, um, it does not include the hole. So the gross area, less the area of the hole. But let's talk about what this uh, area of the hole means for just a minute. In steel members, uh, when we have a hole, um, what, how big uh, is that hole need to be? Now, if you said as big as the bolt, I'd say you were wrong because uh, we have to have some tolerance for fit up. If we made that exactly three quarters of an inch, it would be very difficult for the bolt to fit. So oftentimes we make this larger. This may vary from a sixteenth of an inch uh, up to uh, maybe a quarter of an inch. Uh, you can imagine for anchor bolts, we'd want more tolerance, but for typical steel, we might be able to live with a sixteenth of an inch. The other issue that's uh, significant is that drilling or punching the steel uh, which we do to put the hole in it, causes some damage around the hole. Oftentimes we assume this to be a sixteenth of an inch. So we've got to account for both the oversizing of the holes and the damage of the steel. Let's finally uh, take a look at our fourth objective is, is to put these two pra uh, failure modes in practice. So we're going to think about a little different uh, example here, again with an angle. This is an angle 6 by 4 by a half um, that is ASTM A572 grade 50. And if you don't remember what that is, remember to look at, at section 2 of your steel manual. And so we've got a tension load here. We've got some holes in this. Uh, we're going to lay out the locations of those holes uh, in both the X and Y dimensions. Uh, but you can imagine we're looking at a a downward view of the angle uh, and the six inch leg of the angle. These are three quarter inch bolts with a one sixteenth inch oversize on the holes. Uh, and we want to do two things. Uh, first, we want to draw the failure modes. And second, um, we want to determine uh, the allowable loads and tension for each of the failure modes. So, let's look at both yielding and rupture. Again, yielding is on the gross, rupture is on the net section. So as we sketch this, yielding looks much the same as it did in our earlier picture. The section begins to neck down much as the rubber band begins to neck down. And that occurs in an area often away from the holes. Then we've got to think about rupture. Uh, and rupture uh, will occur through the holes. So you can imagine sort of a, perpendic a line perpendicular to the direction of the tension force 
where rupture occurs. We could draw that in any hole, but we'll just draw it in the first one for now. So now let's look at, uh, at the calculation of these values, rupture and, and yielding. Uh, for yielding, the allowable load is equal to the gross area times the yield stress over our safety factor omega. Omega is uh, 1.67 for yielding. Uh, the gross area is simply the um, cross-sectional area of the member that's found in the dimensional properties of the table. And the yield stress F sub Y of this ASTM number is 50 KSI, and it's found in section 2. So if we do that math, we find that the allowable load is 142.2 kips, which is a very large load, almost uh, just over 70 tons, uh, which is a, a tremendous uh, steel tensile value, uh, and which shows you that, that a, a little bit of steel can carry a lot of load. In rupture, uh, we have much the same formula, only we use the net area and the ultimate stress and a safety factor or, or omega of 2.0. In this case, the ultimate stress from section two of the manual is 65 KSI, and the net area is simply the, the area uh, of the gross section minus the area of the holes. And so if we start to look at this, we have one hole affected in our picture. It's a half inch thick angle. We have three quarter inch bolts plus a 16th inch oversize and a 16th inch of damage area when we punch or drill the holes. Once we solve for the net area, we find 4.3125 and the allowable load of 140 kips, um, which is the governing factor of these two failure modes. And we essentially pick the lower one. So looking back at our steel tension members and outcomes uh, that we had, uh, first we wanted to identify the tension members in steel. We then looked at the slenderness ratio of KL over R and why we have that and how that can be achieved. Uh, and then we talked about a couple of different failure modes, sketching those, and then finally we calculated those values in practice. And this has been our introduction to steel members' intention. Thank you very much.